Hello. So in this episode, we are going to talk about nested resources. It's basically nesting tasks inside projects or nesting messages inside an inbox. So nesting uh, one resource that is logically connected to another resource inside in our roots, in our controllers, and in our views. And uh, here's an example of nested resources in the official guides, and we are going to to try to do it in uh, action in the real Rails app. Now you see, I'm already going to try to use Ruby 3 and Rails 7 Alpha. So I think it's not going to really matter in this specific application that we're going to build with nested resources, but in the future, it's going to be fun to see what works and what doesn't work in Rails 7 Alpha. So let's create a new Rails app. I'll say Rails new. Let's name the app like Twitter, database PostgreSQL. It's been created and uh, yeah, it's running input map install instead of uh, webpack install instead of yarn. Also installed turbo, let's see. Installed uh, turbo stimulus all out of the box. Okay, looks nice. So uh, let's navigate to the application, run uh, rails db create and try opening the application. So I'll go to preview, preview run application. Now I get this error because I'm on cloud nine. So I will stop the server and go to the application config environments development rb config.hosts equals nil, restart and it should be working. Okay, so here's the new Rails app. I will uh, actually commit to git. So git add all, git commit main create app. And now I'm going to scaffold inboxes and messages. So an inbox can have many messages. I'll say Rails generate scaffold inbox uh, title, and that's it. And we are going to scaffold message title and it will be referenced to an inbox. So inbox references. Okay, now Rails DB migrate. And let's again commit this to git, git add all, git commit main, uh, scaffold inboxes and messages. Okay, and now we can start the Rails server and we can start making the nesting work. So what is this all going to be about? Basically here we have our inboxes, our regular routes. We can create an inbox and to be able to see the messages that are related to this inbox. We would maybe want to navigate to inbox one slash messages. And to create a new message for this inbox, we would maybe want to navigate to inbox one messages new. So how are we going to make this work? Well, first of all, of course, we are going to add the the associations will go to our models inbox.rb has many messages and of course inside our messages you can say belongs to inbox but it is done by default when we run the scaffold with references okay so next we're going to go to our roots let's have a look at our roots here they are we have our messages that are at just slash messages without inbox id slash messages and we have our inboxes. And let's have a look at our roots uh, file. You see we have resources inboxes and resources messages. And we are going to nest messages inside inboxes. So we'll say resources inboxes do resources messages. Let's uh, go back to our roots and see what changes. I'll go to a new roots page. And here we have inbox messages path. So not messages path, but inbox messages path. You see, all the routes for our messages are now nested inside our inbox. And let's see how it's going to work. So you see, I go to inbox one, messages, for example. And you see, we get this undefined local variable, new message path. Why is it so? Because new message path does not exist anymore. Instead, we have new inbox message path, you see? So it's kind of nested. Now let's see if uh, it actually works. I will uh, go to our views, update the index view. So go into our index. It will say new inbox message path. And we can pass in the inbox. Oh, actually it worked. 
And you see by default, uh, we have inboxes one, messages new. Now, if we go to our inboxes, let's just create a second inbox and navigate to messages. You see, it already sees inboxes two, messages new. So the path works. And here we get another error. In our form builder, we have undefined method messages path because uh, we are trying to build the form for going to slash messages post, but we need to go slash uh, uh, inboxes ID messages post. So uh, let's go to our messages form builder and we will have form with model. And here we will need to pass in our current uh, inbox and uh, the new message object that is this one. So we will say inbox.first, for example, comma message new. Let's see. And it seemed to have worked. And here we also have this back to messages, messages path. So this one isn't working either. Now, what are we going to do with this? Let's actually do it the right way here. Instead of just getting inboxes first, we're going to find the inbox in the controller by the params ID. So I will say at inbox. And you see, we have no at inbox. So we are going to go to our messages controller controllers, messages controller. And here we are going to go to private methods and say def set inbox. And we will say at inbox equals inbox dot find uh, params inbox ID. So this first is ID is going to be the inbox ID. And if you have messages slash two, for example, or three, here is just going to be the ID. So we are finding message by the ID and inbox by inbox ID. Okay. And let's say that we will set inbox uh, on the very top. So before action, set inbox for all the actions inside the messages controller. Okay. Let's refresh. Okay. So the form was built, but we have a further error in our messages new partial, uh, new template. Back to messages isn't available. So instead of messages part, we have to use once again. Uh, something like inbox messages path. Let's go to our new page. And here we have messages path and we would have inbox messages path and pass in the inbox. Let's see if it works. So the new message view works. I can press back to messages and I will be redirected to inbox slash two slash messages. Okay, let's go to create a message. And actually we don't want to be able to hard code an inbox ID here. We should make it uh, automatically the inbox ID that uh, we are browsing uh, uh, in the URL. So we are going to remove this from the form. So no more inbox uh, ID input in the form. And uh, let's try to create. I press create and inbox must exist. So we must add the inbox in the controller. I'm going to go to the messages controller. And here, actually, I'm going to say not just new, but uh, I will say at uh, message equals at inbox dot messages dot build instead of just message new. So here we are going to initiate the inbox. Let's see if it works. I'll go back to messages, new message, create message. It still doesn't work. So next we are going to go to our create action. And yeah, first we will also remove this inbox ID from the message params. A user should not be able to pass it in. And we'll go to the create action. And here we will say at message equals at inbox dot messages dot build message params. Just like this. And let's see if it works. So once again, I'm going to create a message, create message. And you see, we seem to have saved the message, but we get already another error. And define method messages URL. Again, we should redirect to the uh, at inbox at message. Let's see if it works. I will resubmit. So going to new message, creating the message. And okay, so now we seem to have submitted it. And uh, in the message partial, we have 
no link to show message. So here again, we need to add the, the new path. I'm going to go to the partial. And here we have add inbox comma message. You see, it's uh, kind of uh, troublesome and takes uh, some time to adjust all the code of the messages that are going to be inbox. Uh, are going to be inside an inbox spot, uh, usually it is worth it. Okay, so again, I'll try to create the message, press create. Uh, I still have something wrong in messages show. Here, it's going to be edit message path at inbox, at message. Actually, you can say not at inbox, but you can just say at message dot inbox. But I think it's more correct to say, uh, at inbox, but it doesn't really matter in this particular case. And here button to destroy will say at inbox at message. And here back to messages will say uh, something like uh, at inbox comma messages. I think this should work. So it would, should lead to the inbox messages path. Let's see if it works. Again, uh, resubmitting, create inbox. Okay, this path doesn't seem to be broken. Undefined method, edit message path. Edit inbox message path, sure. Resubmitting again, and it worked. Okay, let's show this message. Let's uh, go back to messages. You see, it leads us to inbox two messages. Let's try destroying a message. And we still get an error. Undefined method, messages URL. So again, we need to go to the messages controller and uh, say that if we destroy a message, it should re redirect us to something like inbox messages. Let's see. Okay, this message doesn't exist anymore. I'll go to inbox two slash messages. Uh, I will destroy this message. And you see, we're redirected back to the right path. And I think we still need to do our updating. So uh, here we should direct not to the message, but to the at inbox comma message. Okay. And now let's uh, try going to, let's say, inbox one messages. And you see, we see the same messages. So in inbox one, we don't want to see the same messages. We want to see all the messages that are relevant to this inbox. For this, we are going to go to our index action and say messages equals at inbox dot messages, just like this. Let's see. Okay, in this first inbox, we don't have any messages. So let's add one message for first inbox. Back to messages. So the nesting works correctly. And actually, we can also do something similar inside our set message. So instead of having a message, message find params ID, we can uh, say message equals inbox dot messages find param ID. So this way, actually, it should potentially search for the messages a bit faster because we are searching not between all the messages that we have in the application, but only between the ones, among the ones that are relevant to this inbox. So the search scope is uh, a bit smaller if you have like thousands of messages, I guess. Okay, so uh, seems to look fine. And this is basically how you can add the nested resources. But uh, let's go another step uh, further. You see, in our views folder, we have inboxes and messages. And also in our controllers, we have our inboxes controller and messages controller. And logically, uh, it would be good to also nest them in the views. So let's say we want to move the folder of messages into inboxes. Let's do it like this. OK. Uh, I guess yes to all. Now, if I refresh, you see no template. So uh, the controller doesn't know that it needs to go to this template. Now we could actually potentially just uh, say in each action that we want to redirect to a template that is nested, but it would be better for us to also move our controller into a folder. So I would say new folder inboxes 
move the messages controller into inboxes. And here, will it work? No, it still doesn't work. So we are going to say that it is going to be in the module inboxes. So we're just saying that it's kind of in the, this folder and that uh, the messages are in the inboxes folder in both views and controllers. So let's refresh. It still doesn't work. So Sidework says that uh, it didn't manage to find the path. It is because we need to go to our messages controller and say that uh, it inherits from the module inboxes. So inboxes, messages controller. Now I go back and it seems to be working. So let's just go back and say inboxes. I will create a third inbox. Okay, now I'll go to the messages. I'll create a first message for the third inbox. I'll create another. Mm, let's go back to messages, new message. I'll try updating. Okay, here in update, I didn't uh, change the links. So I'll go to edit. Here we'll have uh, show this message. So in messages, edit. Let's go to messages, edit. We have show this message. It will say at inbox, at message, and uh, inbox, messages path, uh, at inbox. Let's see if it works. Update, and it works. So this is basically how you can use nested resources in the Ruby on Rails application. Now, at first glance, it can seem like a lot of stress on updating all the scaffolds. But again, usually when working a Ruby on Rails application, you don't really do everything by scaffolding. So I really had to update each of the views and update the links to work uh, inside these nested resources. But usually it helps you keep the logic of your whole application uh, in uh, intact and you'll always know that messages belong to inboxes and you'll know that you can access them both in controllers and in views inside your inboxes and it is easier to scope the messages it's easy to find the inbox id for each message at a glance and you have the nice uh, logically correct url so that's basically it this is how you can really use nested resources in uh, your views uh, in a Ruby on Rails application. So thanks for being with me and have fun coding.